אוקיי. Right. Okay. So, <clears throat> so we looked at uh, some of the the background <clears throat> to the letter, and um, and why he wrote what he wrote, um, and from where he wrote, etc. Right. We have seen that. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, okay. So let's continue. Any any questions till now? Any doubts or clarifications? Nothing. Okay. Okay. So, um, so when we when we write from the greeting and from the first few verses, we we kind of understand, um, you know, the kind of church or the kind of audience to whom he was writing. Okay, and also from the previous, um, uh, like from the Book of Acts and Romans and all that, we see that okay, this was the kind of people to whom he was writing. Okay, believers, seven years old in Christ, um, he had taught them. And so when he says that you come short in no gift, which means that that one and a half year that he spent there, um, he taught them all this. He taught them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He taught them. Uh, he was one of, he was the main, peop, main person to lay that foundation. And of course, we also read that Apollos also went there and he also ministered there, etc. Right. And um, and and so they were established in the word. They had the privilege of being filled with the spirit and established in the gifts also, right? So Paul is noticing that, observing that, and he's saying that you know you come short in no gift, which means that hey, you don't fall short, right? You don't you're not lacking anything. You're not lacking in the area of the gifts, right? Okay, let's look at um, verse ten. Okay, verses ten onwards, uh, verses ten to seventeen. Okay, let me just quickly read. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, lest anyone should say that I had baptized in my own name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Besides, I do not know whether I baptized any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Okay, so verse 10. Now I plead with you, brethren, that you all speak the same thing. Let there be no divisions, but you be perfectly joined together in the same mind, same judgment. Okay, so, so what does that mean? This means that there are divisions. Okay, so and he's addressing that. So we see that in Paul's letter he's addressing many things addressing meaning he's you know referring to some of these problems he says and now about concerning you know now concerning spiritual gifts now concerning you know head covering now concerning this and that and the other so all those different challenges or different issues he is actually referring to it and say okay he's bringing clarity he's saying okay now about this this is how you should be okay this is how you should not be Etc. So he's saying, you know, now about divisions. You know, this is what, you know, uh, he's saying, you know, let there be no divisions among you. So what kind of divisions are they having? They're having, uh, you know, in the, the next verse, it says that, okay, there are divisions because of the leaders, right? The kind of leaders they're saying that, oh, I, I, I'm of this, I follow this leader, right? So he's saying, you know, I plead with you. And in the, he's like, he's begging, saying, let there be no divisions. I plead with you in Jesus' name. It's as if, you know, Jesus would plead with you, right? In Jesus' name, 
you speak the same thing let there be no divisions among you speak the same thing means that we speak the same thing concerning the faith concerning our faith and concerning us as people of god right with with regard to our faith with regard, regard to some of the core things what we believe in let's speak the same thing let there be unity Se secondly it says let there be no divisions meaning you know separation okay division the word used there is schism which means you know uh, i don't know if you've seen you know pictures of you know some maybe some earthquake and then the whole land is divided right deep division so that is what he's talking about he's saying let there be no divisions deep division which is separating you um, you know which is you know just caused a gap which is caused a distance between you be perfectly joined together okay and the word used there is you know the picture is that of a bone that is put together maybe something is fractured something is broken okay but it's healed it's brought together right so perfectly knit together right so he's saying okay it is natural for healing to take place right it is natural for things to be put back together and it is not natural to have divisions it is not the normal course of thing to have these kind of divisions and gaps in your relationships and so on so he's saying you know be perfectly joined together be of the same mind right when it comes to understanding things when it comes to uh, you know whatever you're analyzing be of the same mind okay and be of the same judgment same view say opinion etc now is it possible to be like that right for example if you want to go you know to one place for lunch each of us might have different ideas so i want to eat this i want to eat that right so he's not talking about sameness hey everybody should wear the same color shirt everybody should wear the same kind of thing he's not talking about sameness he knows that god has created us unique because he's if you read you know further down he says hey there are different members in the body right so he's not talking about sameness each member has a different function and different things and all that each one is valued but they are doing different things so he's not talking about the same thing but he's talking about you know when it comes to certain foundational things of believing of the matters of faith you have to be of the same mind let there be you know some of these core issues some of these important things you have to have the same mind you have to have the same faith you have to speak the same thing I and mean, when it comes to jesus when it comes to the word of you know and uh, it comes to a uh, salvation when it comes to the holy spirit and all these things you need to be of the same mind let there be no divisions right so he says he says that okay and verse 11 he says it has been declared to me so paul is in ephesus he's writing the letter from ephesus to the church so he says you know he's naming the people okay so now i don't know how they will look at chloe's household he says you know uh, chloe and the family were also part of the corinthian church so they no notice something something that's going terribly wrong and they bring it to paul's notice we don't know maybe they tried settling it they tried sorting it we don't know we can only assume but it was getting worse so they decided that a paul should know about it the one who taught them the one who has actually started to establish the church he should know about it so um so this is the thing what is the problem he says you know this has been it has been declared to me concerning you you know there are contentions meaning quarrels you are fighting there is strife and what was the fight about it was about taking sides right they are comparing the leaders or the ministers whom god had sent to minister to them like paul was there and we also read about apollos who went to corinth he also ministered there um and then paul mentions you know cephas and 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 also and he's saying that you know you're taking sides and you're saying that i am off paul i you know i are you comparing people ministers of god and saying this one is better and i follow this person you're elevating this person minister and uh, you're doing this right so it's as if they're saying you know you're deriving your identity from following a certain leader right you are adding something you are you're feeling proud that you know i actually follow this person you know this person is my teacher or this person is my pastor or whatever you are you're feeling proud and and not only that 
but you're putting down the other person right so he's saying you're saying uh, you know i'm of paul i'm of apollos you know saying which means that others who are of paul were saying that apollos is nothing you know we are we have been taught by paul the one who came and established and so on and he has taught us he's the, he's greater he's bigger and you know we are following paul right so he's saying you know our identity if it's going to be in a man if we are going to esteem or lift up a man or a minister of god we need to honor but we are going to do that then it's going to cause all these divisions and quarrels and so he says you know i came to preach the gospel and i came to preach the gospel not with the wisdom of words okay so he's saying okay we need to share which means that that also something that we understand okay we need to share the gospel we need to share it clearly we need to communicate it so that people understand but it's not just with reasoning and logic and wisdom of man but with the power of the holy spirit okay so he's saying the less the cross of christ which is the power of the gospel right um is which he is not ashamed of he's saying lest that be made of no effect so so i'm not he's not he's saying i'm not coming with human wisdom or human intellect right um but i'm preaching the gospel according to he's going to say that you know what is the message of the cross and so on okay so verse 18 for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing okay so he's establishing that yes there is there are divisions this is how i i came to know chloe's household have brought it to my notice they cannot be you know we as believers as in the church there cannot be divisions okay so something for us to as you know as ministers of god as believers something for us to address that um when there are divisions that it is not a natural thing sometimes we think you know we are only human we are only human we are only you know people who you know we have strong likes and dislikes so there you know there can be divisions it's fine no all is saying that in a church you know you're the body of christ you cannot have divisions you cannot have these strong things that are dividing you need to have unity when it comes to the matters of faith when it comes to walking with god you know you need to have otherwise you know you cannot walk together you cannot journey together right okay verse 18 the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing but to us who are being saved it is the power of god okay for it is written i will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent where is the wise where is the scribe where is the disputer of this age has not god made foolish the wisdom of this world right verse 21 for since in the wisdom of god the world through wisdom did not know god it pleased god through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believed for jews request a sign and greeks seek after wisdom but we preach christ crucified to the jews a stumbling block and to the greeks foolishness but to those who are called both jews and greeks christ the power of god and the wisdom of god because the foolishness of god is wiser you know if you can call it that the foolishness of god is wiser than men and the weakness of god is stronger than men yes so i say the message of the cross so what is the message of the cross what is the message of the cross he's saying you know this is foolishness to those who are believing the message of the cross is that someone bore your sins and he was executed crucified on the cross right he took it and if you believe that he took your sin on the cross if you believe that he died taking your sin on the cross and if you believe that he rose again then there is the power in that whole act that happened many years ago thousand 2000 years to millennia there is something in that what you can call as foolishness that saves you that changes you right so that is what he's saying you know he's saying it is foolishness those who are perishing they think hey, what is this what are you saying you know it doesn't make sense somebody died for you and you believe that and when you accept that you are changed 
it is foolishness to those who are perishing but those who are being saved you know you've you've accepted you've received and you know that it is the power of god you you know the transformative power of god you experience in your life so he's saying this message of the cross it is the power of god okay and uh, and romans chapter 1 talks about the fact that i'm not ashamed of the gospel okay this because it is the power of christ power of god to save those who are you know uh, to save us right so yeah so he says you know verse verse 19 and 20 and 21 i will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent right in the wisdom of god the world through wisdom did not know god so Paul is saying, you know, man, through their wisdom, through their own striving, through their own reaching out, they cannot know or understand. They cannot come to this understanding of God. They are searching. It has to be revealed. It is not understood. These are spiritual things. They cannot understand with their natural mind. But it is revealed only with the help of the Holy Spirit. Right? So it says, you know, it could be, it seems foolishness, but this is the wisdom of God. <clears throat> Right? It seems like weakness, right? somebody dying, somebody giving up, it seems like weakness, but this is the strength, this is the power of God to bring salvation into the lives of people. Okay, So he's pointing to, after, after talking about you know, this division and everything, he's saying, you know, it is all about Christ. He's saying, you know, I didn't baptize. Uh, I baptized only a few people. But the focus should be on Christ. That is what he's saying. You know, um, I preach the gospel in the power of God because it is the cross of Christ. It is the power of the cross of Christ, and that is the message of the cross, right? So he's shifting their focus back to. Jesus back to what Jesus did on for them it's not about what Paul did for them or it's not about what Apollos did for them yes they ministered they're a minister they came they served right so he's talking about what Jesus did focus on that right so and in saying that you know he says that you know Jews for them it's a stumbling block because they are looking for supernatural manifestations they're looking at signs um, the Greeks were very you know, wise and intellectual academic people and for them it doesn't make you know they are, they are about reasoning and logic for them it doesn't make sense it, it's you know it's things that are not appealing to their intellect right but this message is the same for both those who are seeking a sign those who are you know uh, you know for them intellect and logic it has to make sense only then it may you know they they look at it they it uh, they, it's appealing to them both for both parties for both groups the message of christ is is what we preach we preach christ crucified okay and it is the power of god it is the power of god it is the wisdom of god okay uh, and then he goes on to say that Foolishness of God is wiser, and what appears to foolish, what appears to be weak, is actually wiser and stronger. It is the power of God. Okay. Then in, in verse 26, right, he says, you know, you see your calling. He's talking to them. Now, in the congregation, he's saying, you know, you not many of you were influential or powerful or mighty or educated or noble. Right? So we know understand, okay, there were people who were influential like Erastus there were people like you know uh, uh, others who were there but then uh, like Sosthenes and you know uh, Justice and Crispus who are ruler of synagogues and we see that all of them were there but he's saying you know majority of you you know you're not noble not wise um, but God chose the weak things of the world to put to shame the things that are mighty okay God does that so which means that you know Verse 26, he says, you know, you see your calling. Not many are wise, according to the flesh, right? According to the flesh, according to the natural standards of the world, according to the fleshly standards, not many are wise, not many are mighty, not many are noble. But then you are called, right? You've been called. You're not called because of your accomplishments or achievements, but you're called by God, by the grace of God. And God chose you 
and through you through his work in you his power and wisdom displayed through you he actually puts to shame what the world would call wise and powerful and so on right um and the base things of the world was 28 and the base things of the world and the things that are despised god has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing <clears throat> excuse me the things which are okay so what does that mean that means that things that we think or people that we think are something and someone in the world god you know that we think that they are nothing in the world god chooses i mean god chooses them he chose them he revealed his power and grace in them and through them he's revealing his power and wisdom to those who think that according to worldly standards they are something okay and he says verse 29 that no flesh should glory in his presence okay so what does that mean that means that according to the flesh right nobody can say that you know i became something how or i am who i am i became saved and i'm you know i i'm a great minister of god or i'm you know ministering to so many people no flesh can glory in his presence right because all that we have received we have received from him whether it's the grace of god the enabling you know the gifts of god or the power of god and everything we have received through him right so he's saying that no flesh can glory in his presence verse 30 but of him you are in christ jesus who became for us wisdom from god and righteousness and sanctification and redemption so this is this is the thing you know god did this you believed of course but god did this he invited you accepted but god did this what did he do in christ he put you in christ who became for us wisdom so wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption we received because of who we are in christ jesus right you have access to god's wisdom you have been clothed with god's righteousness you know you have been separated in holiness and sanctification you have been redeemed because god placed you in christ right so that is what is so you can't glory you can't glorify yourself you can't lift up yourself you can't be proud of yourself right so why is he saying that just think about it why is he saying that any answers why is he saying that why is he talking to them no flesh should glory in his presence and why do you think he's saying that everything is pointing to the power of god the power of christ and everything why do you think he's saying that right so he is still talking about the division he's still, still talking about people are saying you know Paul is somebody, Apollos is somebody, Cephas, Peter is somebody. He's still talking about. He's still on the same topic, and he's saying that you know, this is all about Jesus. So whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, you know, we cannot glorify in His presence because Jesus is the one who actually, or God is the one who put us in this relationship with Jesus. Wisdom, sanctification, justification, we have received. We have also not done anything. right we have not also done any great things or accomplishments we received by grace and so verse 31 he says he who glories let him glory in the lord okay which means when we make a boast when we make a boast we can just say that god is everything that is the only thing that we can boast he did great things for me he did great things in me so that is why he's saying you know you cannot create divisions based on man okay so for us the application is this you know we might be going to a good church we might be going to a you know we might be experiencing a lot of things in church or through a minister or group of ministers but that is not reason for us to boast either in the person or in our relationship with the person right our identity should not come from okay this is you know this church is where i'm worshiping and it's a great church and you're putting down other people you're comparing with other believers and you know other 
ministers of God, and then you're so we cannot put other people down. We cannot make our boast in our identity, take our identity from where we are worshiping or who has been ministering to us. We cannot do that. Right. So that's the thing. So the reason is that when we do that, it causes division. When we put people on a pedestal, when we exalt them far above, you know, we need to honor. Paul talks about that. Right? We need to respect, we need to honor um, you know, people. But when we elevate, when we lift up man, we cause division in the body of Christ. Right? So we should be careful. So, so he's saying it's all about the power of God. If you want to boast, if you want to glory, you glory in Christ. You glory in Jesus. Right? Okay, so um, so with that, um, yeah. I'm just seeing that. Any bag background info about Chloe's household? Said, since the info about Ildegra went out to Paul from here. So Chloe's household, um, if you look at Romans, I'm just, uh, let me check. Um, does he mention Chloe in Romans? No, we, all, all we know is that, um, you know, uh, that Chloe and uh, was, uh, maybe they were part of the church, they were serving in church. Um, there, there were believers there, um, but who, you know, kind of uh, saw these whatever was happening, and they were troubled by it, and they decided to kind of make a, put an end to it, right? So that is what we understand, right? Okay. So they all we know is that they were part of the Corinthian church, right? Okay. Any any other questions, doubts, anything? No. You have a friend, so yeah. Uh, yeah. So my question is like, can we say like this? The lot of denomination in now and lot of new 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 doctrines are rising up mm. is because of this like uh, people are like supporting one person like i'm following this person mm. i'm following that person so is it like that or any other reason so your, your question is okay are denom denominations formed because of this no that's your question uh, well actually if you look at the church history you see that okay divisions are formed because of this for sure you know, uh, divisions in the body of Christ, division among in the church itself, uh, because of this. But uh, when you, when you, particularly when you think of denominations, um, you see that in church history we see, um, especially uh, after the Dark Ages, right? We see that um, from the Reformation, from the time of Reformation, Martin Luther and the message, whole um, revelation of uh, salvation by grace through faith, um, Romans chapter eight, and so on. So. Um, so, um, you know, that revelation is brought back to the church, brought back to the body of believers. And then God brings up, you know, the restorative moves, salvation, Holy Spirit, gifts of the Spirit, uh, you know, healing, holiness, uh, sorry, holiness, water baptism, healing, and all this being brought back. And we see that the church, some, some of, at least I shouldn't say all the church, but some some groups of churches are formed because of that restorative move, like, like Lutheran church or, you know, some of these, the Protestant church, early Protestant church and Lutheran movement and all that. So it started because it's a good thing. But they, you know, we would say that they failed to progress beyond that. Now, God was restoring the other things that were lost during the Dark Ages, right? So he's bringing back uh, the whole revelation of, Okay, the Holy Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit, gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, this church, which is, you know, uh, which is which was actually birthed by this restorative move, is refusing to move along and receive this truth, which is being restored. Right? So, again, because of this revelation, there are a group of churches which are again birthed. They're saying, okay, we are full gospel. We are talking about the Holy Spirit and gifts of the Spirit and so on. Um, and 
and so on. You know, so you see these two groups there. So denomination is not necessarily a bad thing. Like it just it just points to the fact that this bunch of people or this Lee, one person who started it, he got a revelation or she got a revelation about the restorative move of God and they were faithful to it. They preached it, they practiced it and people gathered around it. So it just points to that. But when people fail to move on and then when people say, okay, we are everything and then try to put down the others who are being, who are actually got, you know, what, the part of the truth themselves, right? Uh, then there are divisions. So denominations by themselves are not wrong. But when we when we say, okay, we are everything and we are look, putting down others and then we say we are identities from the denomination, then it becomes, rather than Jesus, then it becomes a divi dividing point. That's the thing. Yeah. One more question. So like, like that, like putting it down, um, and like we can see like there's a kind of call to our kind of like is like Catholics and Pentecostal like uh, we are great we are everything like that uh, so is it necessary to talk like you are like this you are like that and is it affecting uh, the Christianity yeah so see um, when, when it comes to certain groups um, where there could be some poor things which are wrong which are not there <clears throat> okay so so what do we do you know when we relate to such groups or when we relate to certain individuals from certain things okay the best thing would be to say, say that okay have you looked at this you know you you know this is the truth according to the word of god but obviously you're not acknowledging it but have you looked at it the word of god says this right so that is the way to relate to it relate to such groups. So nothing comes by putting down a certain denomination. Yes, you know. You know the truth that hey, they are not believing these things or they are believing wrong. According to the word, it's very clear what God says, but they are believing wrong. But by putting them down and saying we are greater, you know, we are somebody, it's not going to help. Right? Rather, if we say, okay, these are things that we believe in. These are core things. We believe in Jesus. You also believe in the Lord. We believe that salvation is by grace through faith. You also believe in that. Wow, wonderful. We believe that the word of God is infallible, inerrant, and you know, a, a scripture is God-breathed. Yeah, you also believe in that. Yes. Let, let's go into the word. Let's see what this inerrant, infallible, God-breathed word has to say. And then you know, you're able to build a bridge. But if we are saying that these guys are nothing, and uh, it's a dead church you're not actually helping them <clears throat> criticize they're also getting offended and saying okay all these pentecostal charismatic churches are like this and they're all about noise and etc you know but but you know we just need to understand that <clears throat> god is doing mighty works in all denominations you know, like recently <clears throat> excuse me sorry even on sunday i was talking to one gentleman who it's from a Catholic church, right? He he came, he's of course worshipping now in APC, but he got born again when he was in the Catholic church. And he got touched, you know, when he was watching some TV program, he got touched and born again. And he says, you know, there are many families like that going, still part of the Catholic church for whatever reason, for fear, the family members are there. Um, they don't want to be, you know, ostracized by the church, right? Because they are there. The family member, they are born again. The other members of the family are there and they don't want their lives to be disturbed or whatever. They are they are still going there. It's difficult. But they are ministering there. They are testifying. This is what Jesus did. This is what the word of God is. We need to look at it and so on. And, um, and even among the leaders, there is a move. Even among the priests, you know, there is a move of God that they are coming to the revelation knowledge of salvation and Holy Spirit and so on. So, be surprised some of the messages that they preach from the you know some of this videos that i've seen i was like wow this is fantastic that's great so yeah and the whole charismatic catholic charismatic renewal right again being open to the work of the holy spirit we're not saying that okay everything is you know right there could be certain things which are not there but god is doing god is transforming them yeah so yeah so we need to build actually bridges 
and not really put down because we know that god can do a work god can any thing that people you know disqualify and say this is this is a waste this is a worthless church i think god can actually you know if there's one person there who's actively seeking god or a group of people god can you know breathe life into that group and and then change it because that happened in the church where i was you know i i went to a i was in a csi church right and uh, but that youth group got touched everybody got born again and and uh, god did an amazing you know move of god revival of god we just saw right before our eyes i didn't know it was revival and you know uh, like holy spirit being poured out and people you know receiving gifts and tongues and all that i didn't know that but then looking back now i see after studying you know revivals visitation hey this was a revival this was an outpouring of the holy spirit in at you know csi church so yeah god can do amazing things right any other questions no okay um online anybody has any questions okay um let's move on right okay yeah nina you have a question sure guy uh are you able to hear me yeah i, I can hear you yeah so just this uh, this was um uh, 27th verse uh, when when uh, paul is talking about that god shows the foolish things of the world yeah to shame the wise and the weak things and uh, to shame the strong uh um, right. foolish foolish as in uh, believing uh, what uh, the cross is all about because it, earlier it says the message of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing uh, but it's wisdom to i mean it's power to them that believe no so is it talking about yeah. that and it's foolish as in that way and uh, also this weak weak as in in the social order or what really does is it talking about weak and foolish and Mm. those things to shame the strong okay so okay so uh, verse 26 is what you're referring to right so he's yes. saying you know so he's talking about the calling okay how you were invited to christ how you were invited to salvation so verse 26 he says you know not many wise and he and he, you and he and he prefaces that by saying okay according to the flesh right so in your natural standing you know in your natural abilities or you know gifting or whatever talents everything you know not many of you were wise not many of you were strong and mighty or you know noble or you know look look at your background maybe because of education or uh, you know nobility or family background and all that you didn't have any of those right but god chose you and god chose to reveal himself and his he poured out his power and transformative power and he he did a great work in you and through you he is displaying his wisdom and his power and so on so so that means that okay so he's inviting you you've come to him now you have the wisdom of christ which is infinite right you or you have access to the wisdom of christ now you are now you are you are you know you are uh, one spirit with him which means you are drawing from the vine as a branch which means that you know the possibilities are endless so we don't remain foolish but now we have we are since we are united with christ we are we have the wisdom of christ we we can lean into the wisdom of christ so we don't remain weak but we are you know we have the the power and the might of god uh, with us we don't remain sinful but we are clothed in his righteousness right so he's displaying all that his power his wisdom his you know righteousness and everything through those who were called when they were called they were all this right so that is what he is uh, so when the when the when the world sees that they are they are actually put to shame now according to the flesh they are strong according to the flesh they are of influence according to the flesh they are wise or whatever but now you know these people this bunch of people who don't have that background who don't have that qualification maybe who don't have that kind of a upbringing even now the wisdom of god is manifest through them so that is what he's saying you know is so and the context is again accomplishments um earthly accomplishments versus you know god's power being displayed through them and saying you know we cannot boast so that's the thing uh with that help um okay sure right 
okay so let's um okay so we we let's move on to chapter 2 right so chapter 2 um we can actually club it categorize it into these four sections right so he he continues right he's saying okay um uh, how does he end uh, it's continue it's a sorry my computer okay so from when when did it was muted okay <laughs> after the question after the answer okay um so did you get the answer okay maybe after that i muted um right so we said we are looking at chapter 2 and uh, we read through what is marked by and paul saying that you know i came to you I came to you, and he's just confessing. Right? He, he's testifying about himself, and he says, you know, "When I first came to you, okay, um, when I visited from Athens, right? From Athens is where he goes to, and from Athens is where he goes to Corinth." So he says, "I came to you not with great skill or eloquence or I think excellence of speech or of wisdom." Right? He's talking about human wisdom, and Paul was a man who was of great learning. He knew the scriptures. He was trained to be a Pharisee. He was a person of great learning. But he says, you know, I didn't come according to human wisdom or uh, according to human skill and oratory, oratory skill. And he says, for I determined, I determined not to know anything among you. Means I determined that you know I'm not going to get into this wisdom of man or philosophical discussion. So, Think like that, but I determined that I'm going to teach you. I'm going to, you know, expose you to the power of God, which is uh, uh, about the cross, which is about the Lord Jesus and Him crucified. He says, verse three: I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. So, <laughs> so he says, you know, this is what you know, I was weakness. And you made limitations. I was in fear. Yeah, must explain. Verse four, my word. Enticing words. First place of enticing words of human eloquence and wisdom. But I came to you uh, in. In the power of God, so let's okay. That your faith, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Verse four. I, I didn't come with all these enticing words, but in demonstration of the spirit and the power. This which means he preached the gospel. He talked to them about Christ and Christ crucified. And, but there was always this demonstration, like putting on display. What do we what do we say when we say what do we mean by when we say demonstration? Like somebody, let's say, buy a washing machine, and then somebody says, "Okay, they come and say, 'Okay, this is how it works. Okay, you read the manual. This is how it works. You switch the on, and then you know, put it in, and then these are the modes and everything, and then they go. And then you ask them, right? They show me how it works, right? Uh, here are some clothes. How does it work? Show me. And then they give you a demonstration of it. Say, 'Okay, 
service which you don't wish to leave. So he's saying, you know, my preaching was a demonstration. It was this active showing right before your eyes that when you accepted, the power of God was demonstrated. You received peace of God, you received salvation, you were born again, everything was made to you, you were made to you. It was something tangible. And also, you know, the powers of darkness, their power was broken. Things, was everything happening. So he says, you know, it was a demonstration of the spirit of God, and with, but uh, it was a demonstration of the power of God. Why? Was fine. So that your faith, your focus, your faith should be, and your belief should not be in the wisdom of man. Okay? So you should not say, oh, well. Preached like this, and he shared like this, and wow, he was a wise man. And uh, my faith is in the wisdom he gave. Your wisdom, he says, it should not be in the wisdom of man. Okay, yes, all preached from scripture and pointing everything to Christ and faith in God and faith in his powers. He said, Your faith should not be in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Okay. So, with this intention, he preached. He says, I determined. Determined means a very conscious, strong decision. When you say, you know, I determined, means that strong decision. I'm not going to budge from that decision. I determined that you, your faith, your experience should be the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. It should be the demonstration of the power of God. So that your faith will not be in me. Saying, okay, this man came, this, this man said something, and I, I believe him. No, your faith should be in, you believe through me, but then your faith should be in the power of God and the wisdom of God, demonstration of the Holy Spirit. So that is something for us also as New Testament believers, as ministers of God, you know, where we are not drawing people to ourselves and saying, oh, this man, this woman, Belong to them or are part of their team and their team. Or, you know, he's, he's dismantling all that. So your faith should not be in me. And as maybe as pastors, we should we should also actively determine that people's faith should be in Jesus. People's faith should be in the Word of God. People's faith should be in the power of God. Okay. So yes, when we start off. Yes, people will lean on us, lean on you. Right? Maybe as new believers, maybe as maybe even as mature believers, they are just believing you. But then you need to make that shift. You need to point them and say, "Hey, you, you check out for yourself. You read the word yourself. You experience for yourself in the power of God, the wisdom of God, that of God." So he says, "This is what he did." Then, um, verse 6. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Okay. Well, right. So, uh, what we do is uh, next class we will continue with uh, continue from 6 onwards. Okay. And then, probably, it will pick up speed as we keep going. Okay. Okay. So, read through and come. I think it will be, be helpful. Even for our discussions and questions. So, we stop here. Thank you. God bless.